And hi there. And today we're going to talk about number 30 Ingleton Road. So let's get straight into it. And I'll do my share screen and we'll go from there. Now, a couple of things to note about this property. It says under offer. <clears throat> I don't know if it is. Uh, we've got to talk to the to the vent to the agent. Um, if it is under offer, then it's very irritating because we did the viewing on Saturday, and obviously um, this market has gone completely crazy. And I don't know. It's uh, we'll find out. But anyway, we're going to knock on through and do this uh, viewing or assessment at least, and learn something from it, I suppose. All right, the property is appears to be a 1920s house, 1930s, that kind of time, is it? I, yeah, you, I'm checking, I'm checking. We'll open the tabs, but I will confirm you shortly. It's hard to say, really, because it's such a basic house. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have stone lintels or anything. It's got the brick um, lintels, which are fine, but it... Uh, it's difficult for me to judge the age on this, honestly. This one. Mm. Any idea? I do not have data. This, I think, well, it's after Second World War. Yeah, okay. 50, 66. Right, okay. But not um, long, because this is the next door property, not exactly the same. I mean, not, I'm just checking if it's just exactly the same type of property. Right. Okay. All right. Well, in any case, it's um, it's nice. It's a good size. I think it's nearly thousand, uh, near ninety three square meters or something like that. Eighty three. Yeah, but yeah, the EPC is D and is sixty uh, seven. Only two scores need to be C, which is really nice. That shows the properties. Good. Yeah. So yeah, it's really nice. Let's have a look at some of these pictures. So. Part of this, overall, this property was renovated in the 80s, I think. And there's a few reasons I think that, but you often get cracking in this kind of location. So these, the, this part of the ceiling would be connected up to, or fixed against the roof joists. And so if they move, this moves basically, and that's what's going on here. Also, this looks like plaster and lath, and you can kind of see that because of the very the, the colors, the, the dark, the white, the lighter, etc. So this is, as I say, it's probably last tidied up or renovated maybe 30 years ago. And another picture of the same thing. And here we are. That's an old carpet. Again, very 1980s in my opinion. Uh, just by the look of it, the colour and so on. And then we have more carpet. And um, so we've got the grey carpet, which is relatively new, but we've got these main bedrooms, which have the old original carpeting. Backyard looks fine. Not Nothing much to say here, really. Um, yeah, it's a good size of the, of yeah. the gar garden, not really the, the biggest not small so it looks okay the one thing i'm always interested in is whether it's got damp proofing proper damp proofing or not and i'm not sure so there are no signs of damp internally which is good so far uh, but you have this course of bricks here which is different to this and you see it's on a slight pedestal so yeah. i suspect that this is the foundation brick layer and this is probably designed to Hold damp back. Quite a pleasant front yard. And and here we have a relatively modern boiler. Yeah, this, the boiler should be fine. Yeah, this looks pretty new actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it is. I don't see any dates on it, but new, relatively. Uh, Side I yard. That because, yeah, because the EPC said that it's. Uh, you don't need the boiler, and the EPC is fresh, so that's yeah. mean that the boiler is good. The EPC is made this year, so that's good. 
And what I'm interested in is, again, this damp proof course. I think there is one, because if you look at this, which is the baseline of bricks, you can yep. see it's quite a lot of gunk around here. It's quite thick. And so they may have laid down a bitumen, a bitumen layer, which would be tar, basically. And then on top of the tower, then you build on the bricks. Today, it's a layer of plastic. But roof looks good. Concrete tiles, again, reiterating the fact that this property must have had a very thorough renovation in the 1980s um, because concrete tiles were quite a 1980s thing overall. And I like them because they last a very long time and they're easy to fix. You just slot new ones in if you need to. And I did see a air brick that's been blocked up, so I don't quite know what's going on with that. And we have a very old circuit board here. So we've got this thing, which I suppose is an electricity meter, but this would need replacing. So this is another three, 400 pounds, that kind of thing. And screen grab, roof, as I said, looks fine. That's moss. That's all. It's fine. It doesn't really need any attention. Um, overall, Based on this so far, I would say it is OK. But let's have a look at some of the video footage and see what that comes up with. Yeah, I agree. It's really totally fine. Yeah. What's not fine is that if it is under offer, it's very, very irritating. Yeah, and the agent said that we have time for offering, so. Yeah. But I see this again and again these days with Manchester. People are just losing their minds. And uh, it's like properties. I, I I don't know. I have this theory. Laminate flooring, fairly cheap, not great. But and I a, really like when you have a bathroom toilet yeah. downstairs. Yeah, it's <laughs> a real benefit. Like you just need to, yeah, you need to fix it, yes. make it better but it is a great benefit having downstairs lavatory. The thing that I kind of feel is going on is uh, almost counterintuitive, well, it is counterintuitive really, that everyone's losing their minds and they're just going nuts. So if the property is basically good, in a good location, it's gone instantly, which, okay, so here's a few things of note which are problematic. Again, 1980s renovation from what I can see, whoops. 1980s kitchen, solid wood doors, 1980s cooker, that's fine. Should, should you go only with uh, changing the doors? Well, maybe. maybe. The issue is that if the kitchen is fairly old, then you might not be able to get doors to fit or whatever, but let's assume you could. So in theory, you could renovate it. But then the, the other thing about this house is, it's a premium priced house or they say yeah. it's an economy priced house in a premium location. And a lot of owner occupiers will look at this and think, well, you know, if I could, I could add my own touches to it and modernize it, make it beautiful and all this. And yes, they could. But it's to bring it up to a kind of standard where it's commensurate with the quality of the area. It's going to need a reasonable amount of work in any event. Yep. Now, there's a few things of note here. The ceiling, I have no idea what's under it. It looks okay. Yep. It looks flat, but it has the dado row, which is a very 19 pre Second World War thing. And generally speaking, if there's a big renovation, it gets ripped out. Now, the double glazing looks fine, so that's good. Yep, basically Overall, I think the, yeah, everything looks straight and flat. You just need leak for the, modernize uh, modernizing yeah it, it's a paint and decorate but it's really a question of how deep you go yeah and the kitchen it, i will add i will at least renovate the kitchen if you make the kitchen nice the 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 toilet downstairs it will look really really nice yeah the garden is good size so yeah, and when you can do extension if in the future if you want to. I will talk about it. 
All right, so we need new carpets, not throughout, but you would swap out the gray carpet or match the gray carpet and run that throughout. Um, one of the issues I find with these textured ceilings is A, they hide things, and B, if they're inconsistent, like you've got different textures, different rooms, it always looks a bit strange. Fitted furniture, a bit dated, but fine. This room needs redecorating. There's your, oh, let's have a look at that. No, that's okay. I was just concerned that there was a crack running into the wall, but there isn't. It's just the roof. That's yeah. fine. And as I said, it's all to do with uh, the roof flexing and storms and things and the ceiling being connected to the roof in that spot. And no real signs of damp or anything. So it's a dry house, which is good. A lot of terraced houses are not dry, and that's often an issue. So a relatively modern bathroom here. Yep. So these fittings would have been put in the last 10 years. The tiling, I don't know. And we've got the same thing downstairs, I think, which is the, the tongue and groove wood. Uh, I think this property was ex-social house, but long, long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, since then they didn't did like a really huge renovation. Mm -hmm. And that's, so, the, that's yeah. how they made it. I think that makes sense because it, yeah, it was sold, it was bought from local authority. Then they did the huge renovation and here we are today. Yeah, and they didn't change everything like the. Yeah, the, um, <coughs> the good thing about these ex local authority properties is generally speaking, the fundamentals are quite good. Yep. Correct. And it's good build, as you can see. Yeah. It, uh, I predict 10,000 for renovation, which is maybe a lot. When you I think it's maybe a little. It, it needs a new kitchen, and the kitchen, oh, yeah. you can't economize on that. So. If you say new kitchen, six thousand pounds, let's say, and painting and record is twelve, so twelve thousand. Twelve thousand, I think, would be the number. Yeah. These days, we're being a lot more conservative about about cost of renovation because it's just so difficult to get good tradespeople. So I would say, uh, and also, of course, we have to factor in cost of. Did I see the, is this purple bricks, this property? Let me check, but I think not. Yes, it is. So. But that's I why really it's under like our... dealing with purple bricks properties. I, I have an overwhelmingly negative experience of dealing with them. Correct. As a general rule, if it's, if it's, um, if it's purple bricks, it's probably nearly worth avoiding. I I just but they have uh, some nice property and it's still hope for them. So yeah. The issue with purple bricks is that it's the vendor, the seller doing the selling here, not that's me. Um it's the the vendor doing the sales piece here. So I'll just stop my share. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, the issue is that. Uh, the vendor is doing all the, the back and forth and uh, they're much more prone to being pitched by a, uh, a buyer than estate agency driven properties who are more experienced and can kind of screen things better. So purple bricks properties generally, uh, they generally so they go under offer like there's just a lack of organization around them and so whenever i think of a purple bricks property i'm like well chances of that coming off are about a third of a normal property with a normal estate agent just because of the messing about yeah anyway yeah, OK, so I want to. And here's an example, of course, I'm sorry. Here's an example, yeah. you know, it's been put under offer. Because um, this is the stock port. It's really, really central. So that's why the price is this. So as you know, stock port is really famous. And you're not far away from the, from the center of the stock port and the train stop, 
differentiation also your close to schools green space pounds also you're close to the like a uh, shopping center so yeah the location is like really prime epc is the it can be easily c so it can be b so that's not an issue the property around i cannot know exact uh, but number 26 it should be this year yeah, built that, nice. <clears throat> there was a huge amount of um local authority building going on in the 50s uh, and this is the property and you can see that they changed the roof yeah so yeah but the, the location is really nice yeah it's um, a lovely property if if you had a chance to bid for it but it's um we will see maybe we'll still have chance we'll call tomorrow uh, again to see what's going on and yeah i want to sp spoke about the capital growth as you can see, it's really good. It didn't decline a lot. Uh, it's grow up not nicely, not super hot. So it's really, really nice based on capital growth. It's like prime. Mm. And comparables, if you see the rent will be 1,100. Yeah, 1,200 the renting, but I think they're too much optimistic on this terrace house. And for the comparable for sale, if you go and if you go for newest listed, so 245, 300, right? I will just move 300. One, yeah, one. the trouble with this kind of price point is that the viability of buy to let starts to really tail off. And, you know, if you think about this property in question, assuming you had to bid hard, which you would have done. Let's assume that you could have done this. And this is classic purple bricks. And I don't want to denigrate purple bricks, but, you know, I just I grow weary of it. And what happens is that they don't know what they're doing, these vendors. The agents don't really support them because they have a very hands off approach. And then they just take a take a basically a decent offer when they see it. And then, you know, other people like us don't have a chance. But let's assume that this was a properly managed sale, then that property would be to 60, 260. to 70. Yep. Yeah, and then you're putting in another 15,000 pounds to renovate it because it's a good property in a really good location and all that. So, you, can't, you can't skimp on that stuff. You've got to spend the money. So 270, 285, and then where does the yield go? It's not there. So, no, but it's there. Well, by 270 maximum, everything, so five. Yeah, but gross rentable yield. Yeah, yeah, it's five. So it's five percent. But if yeah. you're foreign national on 4.29 percent interest. But it, uh, but it will rent more than, it will rent more than 1,100, I think the minimum. It will rent for 1,200. Right. Because it's prime. One well, it's prime 1, location, which means that it has to be primely done up. Yeah. It has to be beautifully done up, which then means you have to put at least fifteen thousand into it. So two fifty, two sixty plus fifteen, so that's two seventy five. Five five percent. Yeah. It's just it's tight, and also yeah. you're paying a whole lot more capital gain. Uh, cap, uh, what do you call it? Um, Stamp duty, because you're paying a lot of stamp duty. Once you get over 250, it all gets expensive. But, you know, in theory, you're under 250 for this. But in pre practice, to win it, you have to be 265, 270. No, 260, I think you can have a chance to win it. Do you reckon? OK. Yep. Well, you know your numbers better than me. And so can we just have a quick look at capital growth, thinking of numbers. Because basically, let's say it's yeah. this. So I see this these kind of numbers all, all the time in, in the better areas of Manchester, like 14%, 15% over the last three years. And it it's about right. Yep. So it's likely to carry on growing, especially prime areas. And if you look at London, a half decent house in a good location, like equivalent to London for this, would be 
6.50. And we're half getting towards that kind of halfway there point. Now, it's not going to do London prices for numerous reasons, but there's still headroom. It's yep. just very irritating that it's got an offer price. Uh, it's uh, got an offer on it already, but I'll- We'll call tomorrow again. Way. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, let's call it. Mm. All right, yes, thank you. And let's go. And here we go. All right. Now I've changed this a little bit. So I've got rid of is the price right? Because actually the, the price is all about the yield. So if the yield is good, then the price is good because the yield is good. So therefore I've taken price out of this equation. I've hidden it and I've zeroed the score out so that it's got a no score and therefore uh, just but I've left it there just in case, but yep. it doesn't affect the overall scores. All right, and let's go. Condition, actually it's okay, but it gets a 3.75 because it does need quite a lot of work, but fundamentally it's good. And yep. location, Martin. It's for the cell. I, I really I'll not give always an offer, but it's really nice. Okay. And area? It's really nice as well. It's 4.3. Okay. And crime? It's, uh, I, I just, it's, uh, it's really low. Really low. Okay, I'll go 4.1 just. Yeah, it's. Or it's just too much for a round number. Demographic is excellent. Yeah, it's 4.7. It, the demographics are really nice, yeah. Mm. And capital growth, well, it's <clears throat> four. It's, three, yeah. it's it's the four kind of one, capital two, growth. Yeah. Well, when I start talking about London and all this, it's because I, at some level, I feel that this is one of those um, comparable areas to good areas in London. Sell time, well, we know it's, it's quick. Fly. And Pretty we know fun. it's quick. And the yield, what's the yield like? Three. You know, three. Uh, so the yield is, a, is poor. It is poor. The, two, the, three dot two, something like this. Not, it's not good. Where's my score? It's because you need to add uh, zero. You need to add. Yeah, I need to put a zero in there. See if that works. Oh, I know. If I put a, it's because it's got such a small weighting, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, there it works. Okay. And. Yep. I've it's, got a fix this issue, but anyway. All right. So it's a, it's close. It's a good good score. It's just let down by yield. The yield. Oh, and I think and I think it's important, the yield. Everything. To be honest, this is more like a house to live than to buy to let. Like. Yeah, it is. And I think. Uh, okay, so let's. But for capital, if you if you have like five houses, oh, this is for capital growth. The author is for yield, like for mixture. It's good mm -hmm. to have it in the portfolio, but only one house to have it, the yield will not work. So it will yeah. be like problem. Problem. It. Yeah, and I think as a general rule, when we come across properties in these incredibly hot areas. Uh, we just have to, A, always book the earliest viewing we can, which is what I always do. But also, we have to assume that we just have to get the turnaround done as quickly as possible. And it's almost like I feel that we can't even wait for the viewer feedback within reason. You know, that we, we have to just get on and do it. And then if the feedback is terrible, fine, then we say, you know, we say we're going to pull the offer, but it's a difficult one. And we didn't get the feedback till, do you know when we got the feedback? Today. Okay. Yeah, it's just so, too, uh, it's not good. And, you know, we kind of know that markets are nuts in certain areas because we got the data we can see, and we know from experience. So I think okay. whenever, when as a general rule, whenever we see properties in these absolutely insane areas, then, you know, we just have to get that offer in 
almost before the condition report is done. Yep. Anyway. Um, you, you should, like the ones condition assessment, what I do did, so maybe you can just adjust it like, like 20, 30% more than that, because mm -hmm. I go always like lower and uh, yeah. in no way. I, I just don't want to give, because sometimes it's happened like, like you give 10, 10k for an elevation, it will be really seven, or sometimes mm -hmm. I give the 10, it will be 15. When we'll be, yeah. you, you never know well, until you the property. Yeah, exactly, which is why we have to do the viewings. However, um, we also know that once we've had a view bear viewing, then technically we've done the viewing and therefore we can make the offer. And so there might we be can some... change that. Yeah, we can change this plan. And after we can do the analysis and we can tell you if it's a good or not. Yeah, but well, we can we go can... with we can, we can go with the like renovation cost from my uh, my assessment. So yeah, well, go from I, there. I, yeah, exactly. Well, we've made the renovation costs more conservative, so we've increased everything by twenty percent because. I think we really have to, and we, with renovations, I think we just have to assume the worst and go from there. And um, but also with these properties in these ultra competitive areas, we're seeing it too often. I've had this three times now over the last few days, four days, where properties have basically been sold before we've even had a chance to give feedback and get stuck in. And it, I don't know whether there's something in the group zeitgeist where estate agents are just desperate to close deals quickly because they're afraid the market will collapse or something or i don't know what i don't think the market will collapse by the way for what it's worth um, i don't know it's very strange it's either a weird set of coincidences or we aren't fast enough or something or we're just dipping into markets that are too ludicrously bonkers but anyway, there it is. All right. Well, thank you very much. And thank you. Uh, we'll call and we'll update you and let us know if you want to send off or we can push them to see yeah. if we can make something. But as a general rule, I think just playing around at these price points, yields don't get good. And in theory, if you've got lending on it, unless you can get really cheap lending, that's not going to make you a profit. It'll be break even. Like any any foreign national at 5.2% gross rentable yield is literally a break even, especially now with interest rates creeping up a little bit. So anyway, I don't I don't uh, feel confident about bidding in this kind of price point really. Yeah. If right, you then. want to bid, if you want to bid in this price point, buy one, buy two who will have better yield more than six and you're ready to go to have different kind of properties yeah my, my, all right my point of well, view okay well thank you thank you